Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we give all the honor, all the love to you, Father. Thank you for always protecting our family, our church family, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that we are protected from all the harms and car accidents. Today is beautiful Sunday. We gather in your name, Father. May you bless all of us with grace and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand up for Apostle Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitting on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's scripture is Hebrew 12, verse 5 to 6. Hebrew 12, 5 to 6. My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those who loves, and he punished each one he accepts as his child. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> How are you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. No, the second part. <laughs> One more time. This is the day the Lord has made. Ah, a little more strength. One more time, okay? This is the day the Lord has made. I like your spirit. That's the spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, we come to almost to the end of Hebrews chapter 12. <coughs> Why God chastens us. <coughs> Do you know the meaning of chastisement? Discipline. Training. Okay. In Greek means training children. Okay? So discipline is doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. Is that what is happening in our lives? If I don't want to do it, I want to do it. Right? I want to do it, I don't want to do it. <laughs> so today the author is talking about the later, uh, the first part of uh, chapter 12. The, old, the Bible says, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when He corrects you. So two, I want you to notice two verbs. Acting verb here. <coughs> discipline. Okay? And then, correct. When He corrects you. Don't give up. Meaning, do not turn your face away. Do not try to avoid, okay? Escape from the discipline. For the Lord disciplines those He loves. And He punishes each one He accepts as His child. So clearly the scripture said that God does not discipline who is not his children. Is that good or bad? <clears throat> Bible says God is love. How come God ignores non-believers? He doesn't discipline. Only he disciplines to his own children. Meaning what? Christians. Whoever 
claims that Jesus is my Savior and Lord. Only to that person, God disciplines. That's what it meant here. Okay? I have a question here. How many faces do parents have? <coughs> huh? <laughs> a lot? No, came down just two. Pick two. What is it? <laughs> kind and angry. <laughs> okay, in other words, one is loving face. Okay? Always smile and always accept and embrace. The other one is what? Angry is what? Devil face. Devil. <laughs> what about God? <coughs> How many do you think? Just pick two. <laughs> Make it simple. <coughs> Loving face is same. What about the other one? Does he have devil face? No. What is it? <laughs> Chastening face. It's not angry. Gentle. Be patient. It doesn't smile sometimes, but it doesn't rebuke. He just wait and see patiently. That's what we need for our physical parents. You know, Ephesians 6, 6 4, chapter 6, verse 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Okay? But rather bring them up with the discipline and instructions that comes from the Lord. So it's not easy, right? We easily lose temper. That's why we just angry with children or parents. But God never does that. That's the only difference. Loving face, we do both have. That's why I think God has given us the relationship between the parents and children. Blood relationship, in other words. You cannot love other children as much as you love your own. You love your own children more. That's right. But you hate more, right? Other kids. But not to your own children. <coughs> Generally speaking. Because you are not related in blood. Blood relationship. Even though parents do not choose their own children. Neither children did. That's the rel relationship God's given. We have no right. We had no right to choose my parents. But I was born here. That's God's given relationship. Why? Sometimes I think a lot. This is God's given relationship. I have no choice. I have to love them. I have to honor them. I have to respect them. Because in that relationship, we can find God's attributes. That's what God wants us to practice at home. See, if your parents, if you have a two or more than two kids, they're so different. Not even one thing in common. It's two different characters. That is what God wants to do in our home. Because we are all different. We exchange our strength and weakness, accept, and to learn, to stretch out. So, why God chastens us? That's the question. Why do parents discipline children? The very same reason God disciplines us. Why? Today, He loves us. 
That's the bottom line. He loves us. We love our own children. That's why we discipline. We train. For what reason? Okay, we're going to find out two reasons today. Okay? Number one. <coughs> How come? Okay. You don't see it, right? Because we are His own children. <laughs> That's a verse 7. Okay? Verse 7, as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? Okay? Because of his own children. Because we are children of God before the children of our own parents. Can you love neighbor's kid? Can you discipline them? No, they wouldn't listen to you. You know, one day, the area where I live, I met a little kid and I called him. I didn't know. I had no idea. Hey, little son. And he said, he just promptly responded back. I'm not your son. Don't call me your son. <laughs> wow. <laughs> With rage. He's maybe six or seven years old, little kid. But he was so cute, so I didn't know. I just called him, hey little, because I didn't know obviously his name, so. Little son, you're so cute. And he said, don't call me son. I'm not your son. I cannot discipline them because he is not my son. That's what God is telling here. I don't discipline who is not my, ch my, my child. So that is one encouragement. Because we are saved. We claim ourselves to be, we are the sons of Christ. So God wants to discipline us. Because number one reason is what? We are His sons. But in this context, son means what? It's not little kids he's talking about. Mature son, adult, grown up. You know, little kids, when sometimes God uses all the storms in our life to discipline us. For instance, financial crisis, physical crisis, accident. You know, all kinds, of, all kinds of troubles in our lives. Little kids, they cannot endure. So all there is talking about here, mature son, grown-up sons, who can endure those storms as a challenge. Kids, they will run away. So God, the purpose He disciplines us to grow spiritually so that we can endure, we can accept the challenge. Rather we just go away, escape from the reality, we face the challenge because God loves us. Because we are His own children. So Proverbs says, For the Lord corrects those he, he, who He loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. So th that's the main reason He disciplines us because we are His own children and He loves us. But to learn what? To submit our own will to His authority. That's the number one. <coughs> and the number two, to obey His command to respect and fear Him. So submission and obedience, that's what He is teaching us. Just like to our own parents, right? Under parents' authority, we need to submit our wills. Otherwise, we're going to be very selfish. No supervision. Spoiled brat. This is my life. He gave me my life, but 
The life that I live, this is my own life. You have no right to interrupt. That kind of children, God never wants. Same as our parents. The reason we discipline, we train children to submit our authority. And then to obey parents' commands. To respect, to honor, and to fear. So that's the first reason God disciplines us because we are His own children. Number two, He wants us to be a better person. Verse 10, For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how, but God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in His holiness. Okay, Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Okay? Because we are sinner. God says we must admit who we are. We are sinner. And Proverbs 22 says, A youngster's heart is filled with foolishness, but physical discipline will drive it far away. Doesn't mean that you just whip them, spank them, if they don't listen to you. No, that, that, that's, what, that's not what God is talking about here. You know, one classic example in the Bible, uh, the first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 12. Paul is talking about Israelites while they were in the wilderness. You know, thousands of Jews had died in the wilderness because of sins. You know, this is a rare uh, occasion. So we have a question, why God allowed them to die in the wilderness? Why couldn't He save them? It is unusual chastisement from God. But it is also possible. So time to time I see the cases in my past ministry. The father was an elder or deacon, very faithful and servanthood in the church. But sometimes they committed suicide. Why? It is so sharp in the church. So we never know what had happened to them. But throughout the Bible, there are many, many cases. God just took their lives because of sin that we didn't know. It could happen. So in our life, we face someone is pinpoint you, harsh word, persecution. Just let it go. I love that song. Let it go. <laughs> Don't remember. You know why? We are all going, all going to die someday. They will die too. Just let it go. You know, God wants us to be a better person every day. You know, be better than you were yesterday. Why? Because we need to learn. We need to learn to submit our will, wills to the authority of God. The first practice is, we must learn to submit our wills to our own parents. That's the first, the, the first step. We must practice how we submit our wills to the parents first. If you cannot do that, how can you submit your will to the authority of God who is invisible, who is the Spirit? That's why God allowed us to have a family, the relationship between the parents and children. We need to exercise. As I read Ephesians 6, 4, Fathers, do not 
make children upset by your emotion, the way you treat them with a harsh word, angry face, devil face. So as I mentioned the first point, God wants mature son, not an infant son. Mature son only can endure all the challenges and storms God would bring to your life. So we need to grow day by day as our own children grow day by day to be mature Christians or to be grown up. Same. God is using the same analogy because God is spirit. But in reality, we have families. Family, I didn't choose my parents. I didn't choose my own children. That's why we say God's given one. We need to treat them well. To be mature Christian. That has to be where? In home, not in the church. At home. Home is the first. Children can learn from the back of their parents. They observe everything. It's like a digital camera. Maybe hundreds of scenes in a second. When they turn their head, everything goes into their hardware. Store them. That's why, you know, when parents got angry and then scold them, they will retrieve the data. Dad and mom, the other day you said this. <laughs> Counterattack. <laughs> That's why I let it go. Erase that. Put those data out of your brain and put it into where? Trash can. The click. <laughs> Always make it empty. Because what? God loves you. God only disciplines to his own children, meaning you and I, who claim to be, we are the sons of Christ. God doesn't discipline neighbor's kid. We cannot discipline, we cannot train. Them. That's why God has given the family relationship so that they can learn how to submit their wills to the authority of parents and to obey their commands, their guidance, to respect and honor and fear. That's what God wants from us. That's the only reason God chastens us. So what kind of sufferings or storms, hardships, He use? Number one is finance. Today's word, money. Money talks. Money can buy everything. Is that true? Money can buy iPhone, but money cannot buy love. Materials comes and goes. But our eternal life will remain forever. Amen. Amen. That's why verse 7, Christ said, not chapter 12, chapter 13, Christ is forever yesterday, today, two days ago, tomorrow. <laughs> Even church leaders, the Old Testament priests, they live one life and they, they had to live. We are all going to die, but Jesus remains forever. So we should remember Jesus, not our church leaders or pastors. Jesus is the one. 
This is the second reason. reason. He wants us to be a better person. In, a, in other terms, He wants us to grow every day, to be mature, to be a leader, to take care of baby Christians, young ones. So we need to be equipped and prepared. Because when Jesus would come, nobody knows. Even Jesus himself says that. Only my Father knows the date and hour. So it doesn't matter when he comes back. It has nothing to do with our current life. For fact, he will come back someday, sometime. So what should we do is we need to be ready, prepared, so that we can be with Him. That is the point. That is the most important fact. doesn't matter whether He comes one hour later, tomorrow, whether we are ready to receive Him as our bride. That is the important thing. So, the reason God disciplines us is that we need to learn to submit our, our will to the authority of God. That's the one thing. The other one is we learn to obey His command, to revere Him, to fear Him, who He is. He's the one who can give us a life. He's the one who can take our life away. Because He is our Creator. Amen. Another reason, fruitful living. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Yeah, this is the Proverb 29. Words alone will not discipline a servant. The words may be understood, but they are not hidden. So words, only word of God is not enough. It only makes you legalistic person. As Bible says that, we need action. That's what the, the next chapter said that. The chapter 13, Hebrew chapter 13, 15, verse 15. Let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, one thing, proclaiming our allegiance to His name. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need, to do good work in sharing. These are the sacrifices that God, that please God. So two things in Hebrew said, continual praise of God. And to do good works in sharing. Sharing means what? Not only the materials. Our energy, prayer. Whoever is in pain, whoever needs us, we need to be there. All those support, sharing. That makes who we are. We are true Christians. So, he, Jesus said that, I am the vine, you are the branch. Those who remain in me will produce much fruit. So our ultimate source is in Jesus. If we are in Jesus, we make fruit? No, because He is doing all the work for us. So the fruit will come. We are not the ones. So as long as we remain in Jesus Christ, that's why we need to read the scriptures every day and to have a fellowship. True fellowship is what? Based upon, is not based upon race or family situations. True fellowship is what? Whoever is in Christ the spiritual. In that relationship, we can share everything. 
fruitful living. God, that's what God wants us to do. So when storm comes to your life, do not avoid. Do not turn away. Just face it with, as a challenge with your faith. That's what God wants us to do. In order for us to do that, we need to be fully grown sons, grown man and woman, to endure the storms. So that every day we can grow spiritually, day by day. And end result, we bear lots of fruits in our lives. You know, even the Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said that disciples asked him, how can we uh, tell people, those who are in church or in the ministry as well, we can tell they are born again Christians. What was Jesus' answer? Look at their fruits. Look at their lifestyles, how they live. That is the only way we can say they are true Christians or not. You know, I've met a lot of people who has title in the church. But the way they live is not truly born again Christians. Whenever they face storms, they just run away. They don't want to face it with faith to challenge it because of God. So the lifestyle we see, we can tell indirectly. They are not. They never experience God's love or grace. They only have words in their head. So, word of God, if they don't have action in their lives, word of God makes people very legalistic. It's so easy to judge, easy to say things. But when we look back in our lives, we don't follow. We have no submission to God. We have no obedience to fear God. We're just saying that with our lips. So a Christian who does not learn subjection to authority will never become a useful, mature adult, fruitful living as a result. So, it's like this. You know the nature of eagles. You know when, oh we cannot see clear. Where's the other picture I put? <laughs> <laughs> Little ones, <laughs> we don't see it, but in the nest, okay? There is a one in the front here. As they grow, they're enabled to fly, but they don't want to. They don't want to get out of the nest. So, what the mothers do? Kick. <laughs> Kick him out of the nest. <laughs> Why? Discipline. So that they can learn how to fly, right? They're just watching on top. And then one cannot just open their wings and don't know how to fly. The mother just drives down and catches them. That's the next picture. This is our God. When God brings storms, He will he will watch us, how we handle it, how we challenge with our faith. We put our faith onto God. God, I know you're going to help me. You're going to rescue me out of this storm. 
That's what he's doing into our lives. Even ego does that. How can our great God, abundant God, loving God, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Is that encouragement? That is our God. So, Paul says in Romans 5.3, When we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. First thing. And then, endurance develops strength of character. And then character strengths our confident hope of salvation. So, when God corrects us, don't be afraid. You know, throughout the, the New, uh, Old Testament, God says, even to Abraham, I am with you. Throughout Isaac, Joseph, David, all the way through, even minor prophets. Haggai, I am with you. Don't be afraid. And then Jesus came, the last chapter of Matthew, I'll be with you at the en end of this age. So that is His promise. That much He loves us, that's why sometimes He brings storms for us to realize and be awakened what God wants from us. God wants to correct us so that we can redirect ourselves to God. It's like a sheep without the shepherd. They don't know where to go. But we have God who is spirit invisible. That's why it's hard to follow. That's why God gave us the scripture, the church, leaders, all the good examples back in chapter 11, how they had lived in their lives. So we can learn from them. So the Word of God and the Christ, those are the only things will remain forever. So when you have storm right now in your lives, whether it's financial situations, or physically, or other things in our lives, anxiety, worries, struggles, Maybe Tom has uh, anxiety for tomorrow. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> God is with you. Mm. We need to clear our thoughts, calm our hearts. Patience. You know, I love this verse. Love is patient. And everything else will come follow. We need to be patient. We need to be sometimes, we need to sometimes sit down, be still, be patient until the Lord takes action. That's what we need. So two things God chastens us is that submission. We need to learn to submit to His authority. Secondly, we need to learn to obey His commands, to respect and to revere Him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You so much that uh, You saved us. And we earned the eternal life because of Jesus Christ. But we don't possess it yet. So until that time, we need to be struggle and fighting against not only ourselves, but the world and Satan to bring out your victory in our lives, to grow maturely, to endure all the storms, all the corrections, 
all the disciplines so that we can be very faithful and matured Christians to look up to you on one hand and the other hand we can take care of young Christians so that they can learn from us to follow to be to be able to learn how to submit their wills to the authority of God through their parents and then to obey the words to respect you through the parents that's the whole purpose that God allows us to have a family situations to learn each other to learn the submission to learn obedience that who you are you are our God that's our going to be our final confession and conviction so that we can live this world until you come back so father I ask your blessings upon your children so that they can live wisely and happily and joy joyfully to bring out your glory in their life and also other other people's life as well thank you for your blessings and thank you for uh, even today the worship in Jesus name amen <laughs>